Hello there, it is what, October 25th, 2013's weekly wrap up and uh, still working on the Harmony course, gonna be working on the Harmony course, uh, uh, released what, step seven this week, we're talking about descending uh, melody, melody lines that help you recognize intervals descending now, we've already done the ones ascending. Again, this is the kind of the dog work. I once had a, uh, when I was taking saxophone lessons, I once had a great saxophone teacher uh, who just said to me, you know what, Jim, there's no getting around it. To get this instrument together, you just got to do the dog work. You got to do the dog work, man. And then once the dog work's out of the way, that's when all the fun is really there. So I don't know if you guys think this is the dog work or not, but this is not nearly as much fun as after you know these intervals. Once you have these intervals and you can call them up in various different ways and understand everything that's going on with the harmony, it's so much fun because you just know what you're doing and you hear music in a different way. You have a brand new appreciation for what music is doing. So uh, I can't stress it enough. Learn these intervals. Learn your intervals both ascending and now descending, and that's what step seven is about, is just to help you do that. So for this week's uh, musical tip, I thought I'd talk a little bit about vibrato. Now I'm always saying to the YouTubers when I do these to come on over and that we have a vibrato course. But uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about vibrato right here. First of all, what is vibrato and what do we know about vibrato? Because different people have and I say different people, I mean different teachers, different teaching methods, different schools of thought in relationship to how vibrato is even produced. We're starting to learn a little bit more about vibrato in the year 2013, and it's kind of like a tremor, believe it or not, of your whole voice box. The whole voice box undulates. But for that to happen correctly, you need your vocal cords to have a certain closure, a certain type of compression that they're making a good seal, and the voice box has to be balanced in the middle of the neck and when the air pressure is hitting in a smooth even way suddenly you can start to produce vibrato now there's a difference between producing vibrato and what tremolo or a warble is now all three of those words definitions have to do with how fast or slow uh, we're getting an undulation a pulsation a warble is that like cowardly lion, uh, 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 too slow. And uh, if you are going too fast, you sound sort of sounding like a billy goat, that's too fast. Well, in our culture, what we like is a the coveted vibrato is somewhere between four and seven, maybe eight pulsations per second. More than eight pulsations per second, it starts to become too fast. Less than four, it starts to become too slow and becomes a warble. So again, uh, these things happen because the air balance is incorrect or and or the voice box is not balanced the correct way or there's muscles getting involved. Also, sometimes when you hear a young singer, when you start working with a young singer, they sound like they have uh, too much vibrato. It's, that's not really vibrato. That's more of a non-coordination of the muscles and uh, the singer has to learn again how to direct their air in the right way to get that to happen. So now, if I go, oh, I let my vibrato come in, but nothing really happened here. Oh, when that vibrato comes in, this voice box right here, my Adam's apple, it's just staying really relaxed. The digastric muscles are not really being involved at all. You can feel, oh. I can feel that vibrating, yet I don't feel any movement here, and I don't feel any movement here. That's not the way it's happening. Again, what's happening is a balanced pulsation through resisting vocal folds, and the whole voice box actually starting to undulate. And when that undulation happens, you get vibrato, but it's all internal. That's why, I mean, when you touch the voice box, you're not going to feel the voice box going like that. That's not what you're going to feel. You can feel the pulsation, the vibration, and you feel the feeling of it. Now, can you slow down or speed up vibrato? That's another question that people ask me. And yes, I can. And so can many of my friends that I work with, and so can my students after a while. 
you kind of have to think it, and that's what's strange, because these are some of the things that, first you have to feel what it feels like even to have vibrato, and that means balance. And once you have that vibrato, you have to think about increasing or decreasing the speed. Can you increase and decrease the speed a lot? Some people can, some people can't. I really can't increase it and decrease it a super amount uh, unless I'm really, really thinking about it. Maybe in the recording studio for a moment, I could try to do a take over and over and over again and get my vibrato to go really, really slow because I was looking for some special effect. But I wouldn't do that on a regular basis. What I normally do, I call it the release because for me, I actually have to work at not having my vibrato. I have to think about holding my note straight and then as I'm controlling it with my muscles, I just release into my vibrato. That's my natural, uh, that's my natural reflex. So again, if I'm going, oh, I'm really thinking to hold that note straight like that. It's easier for me to actually go, oh, and let that come in like so. So, vibrato, you need a balanced larynx. You need good consistent air pressure. Don't bang at the onset. Don't go, uh, and push things. Oh, I'm coming in smooth and even. Oh, and I let the vibrato come in. In our culture, uh, what we normally like to do is hold that note straight and then put a tail of vibrato just off the end. So everything is going nice and even, smooth, no vibrato, and then in comes the vibrato, which helps make the tone sound really rich. And you don't always use it. When I sing uh, with uh, one of my partners and we're out there, it depends upon what I'm doing. If I was singing Frank Sinatra songs, I'd use vibrato all over the place, because he did. But uh, if I'm singing Everly Brothers tunes, no, because uh, they didn't. If I'm singing rock songs, lots of rock songs with a lot of high energy up on high notes, sometimes yes, sometimes no, depending upon who you're singing like. But a lot of the rock singers didn't use vibrato. Uh, the, a lot of the heavy metal rock singers didn't use vibrato. So again, it depends upon the style and what you're doing. But nevertheless, rather you, it's stylistic for the songs that you're into or not, you do need to learn how to control it, how to have it, how to take it out, how to bring it back in again. Because all of the ability to do all of those things actually helps you create a very healthy voice as well as a well-rounded voice that has lots of artistic choices. All right, I have a big day today, a very big day. I uh, got a performance tonight that I know lots of people are coming to. We have been uh, advertising it for a while, and it's, was, it looked like a, one of those gigs that was way off in the future, and now it's actually here today. Uh, singing all kinds of uh, old-school rock and roll, really, tonight. And uh, first set, just doing it as a duo. Second set, bringing a four-piece horn section on uh, to work with us. And uh, again, I'm really looking forward to it, so gotta go. See you guys next week.